Hey, quick update before we give you this elevator video. Uh, yes, I do know that the contest giveaway sign-up form is broken. Uh, also, the contest drawing form is broken on my admin interface. Web host changed something. The support ticket is open. They're on it. Uh, none of your information is lost. They have assured me, and I've looked into the actual backend files and my web route. Uh, yes, all the data linkages were still working. The API was still working. The database is still there. I just can't do anything with it, and you can't add yourself to it yet. It'll be up and running some point soon. Uh, don't worry, I still have plenty of old giveaways I still have to get in the mail. Working on it every day, I swear to God. I'm going to be out of town for like a month. And yeah, I'm going to come up with some kind of videos for you in the meantime. I hope you enjoy the eclipse today. And I hope you enjoy this little thing about elevators at the moment. Stay safe out there. Hey, everyone. Got a curious elevator question. Uh, more than once, actually. I've seen this come in from a few different people and places, and one of them, even my teammate, Drew. So sometimes you'll see funny elevator pictures posted online. Uh, the shuffle button, right? The famous shuffle button, which has been photoshopped into looking like a DJ pad. Uh, shuffle button is real. You can ask me about it either in the comments or Howard and I talked about it on previous elevator hacking talks. This is new, though. This is a, like, a select your answers elevator, a yes-no elevator, a Boolean elevator, true-false, yes-no, plus minus, what, what's going on in these photos, right? So I wish I could offer you some kind of crazy fun explanation about a rare beast that you'll never see in the wild, and oh, it's so special if you run into one of these. It is special at the moment, they're not common, but they are going to become more common. This is 2019 safety code. This is to do with serving people in an emergency and accessibility. So it's something I do like to talk about a lot if you've seen me in Red Team Alliance classes and elsewhere. And there's a talk I've got coming up this spring that's gonna really either be amazing or boring all about life safety code and how we can exploit it as attackers and how it's valuable for you know, regular people. But this one in particular has to do with accessibility of communication. Let's take a little trip back in time. Uh, normally when you had an emergency in an elevator in the early days, uh, well, you were stuck. You were just stuck there. There have been many movie plot points, of course, of people stuck in elevators. Eventually, people realized, hey, we, we should have something that helps people out. So the alarm bell was common. We still have alarm bells to this day. If you press, you know, alarm in an elevator, you might get a much louder sound than you were expecting. Because it's not like you're sending an alarm to some other place. The alarm bell is a local alarm. It's, it's a, literally a clanging, like, school bell type alarm very many times and it's often on top of the cab. So it's very audible up and down the hoistway, which is a loud echo chamber. It's not like it's going to be audible outside of the building. There have been stories of people trapped in elevators during power outages or mechanical failures, and they've tried to like, if you press the alarm bell, you'll, it's deafeningly loud. And people will try it for a few minutes, but at late at night in a building, like you're not just gonna sit there holding it. it it's painfully loud many times. So obviously we need something new, hence the e-phone, right? The emergency phone in an elevator required by code on basically all elevators now. Modern elevators in some areas even require intercoms in addition to the e-phone. That's very common up here in the Pacific Northwest. You'll see intercoms and warning lights if there's an intercom failure detected. You can use intercoms to listen into these elevators, by the way, if you're in the lobby. Different story, different topic. We're talking about, hey, I'm trapped in an elevator, or I've got a problem in an elevator, or I need to talk to someone who's not in this elevator. That's what the e-phone is for. In the early days, of course, it was the Wild West. They were just like phones on the wall. And you'll still see those in non-compliant or very outdated elevators, where it's like a trim line phone in a cabinet that you have to pick up and dial numbers or something. Uh, that's not what we do anymore. First of all, that requires somebody to know somebody to call. Maybe you have no friends. Maybe you don't know who to call. You never learned about 911 or 988 if you're not having an emergency where you want someone shot. So let's say you don't have hands or your hands don't work very well. Like maybe you're on the floor having a heart attack using a trim line phone to like dial your doctor and say, hey, yeah, the uh, nitro pills. I, I got to get a re-up on that prescription. My heart's given out. That's not going to work either. So by until very recently, modern code simply said, elevator e-phones shall be activated by a bu simple button press, not behind a panel or something like that. And if you hit the button, voice communication shall not be required. This was often handled with a sort of automated call, 
very modern elevators would sometimes even self-report their own location. Sometimes with, you know, there'd be a ring down circuit straight to whomever they programmed, and then there'd be a pre-message, you know, pre-read message, pre-recorded, hey, this elevator, this building, this address has a problem. And then you'd be maybe connected with a live operator, maybe connected with a service, maybe connected with an automated system where you would just kind of shout and say, yes, uh, I shout one to continue. Like, that's good because again, if, if you literally are having a stroke in an elevator, you could slap that button, fall down on the floor, and ostensibly still be rescued if everything is working correctly. We, of course, have seen many elevators that are not up to code. There are violations where they don't actually have, you know, identifying locations tied to the circuit of the phone, neither here nor there. Nowadays, to allow people even more options in terms of communication, we are seeing in the soon to be adopted 2019 code, you'll see this rolling out, actual sort of screens with text and a camera, because we've talked many times about how cameras and elevators aren't really monitored, they're just kind of used for reconstruction after an accident. The most common accident in elevators is trip and fall, mislevel on the platform. So yes, Cameras have been around for sort of liability reasons, but now you're going to see a camera on the panel that usually will not be active unless you're making an emergency call. And that little display screen that you see in these images, that may be a series of interactive prompts where let's say you don't have the power of speech. Let's say language is a barrier or who knows what, you can still try to hit yes or no to answer yes or no questions in addition to regular verbal communication if that's your jam. So if you come across these, definitely hit me up. As you always see in the corners, I'm on the social medias. They're, they're up there on these. I, I don't throw these up there because I'm trying to grow my audience. God knows I would have better production values if I was trying to do that. But I do love feedback. Like I love when people say, hey man, I was at this resort. Like EV sent me this, I was at this resort. There were these microchips and towels. Like I was like, cool, steal one. I'll pay the 20 bucks. I want to see what that microchip is. It's probably EM credentials. But uh, yeah, if you find weird stuff in the world, like weird shit in elevators, Hit me up. I'd love to know about it. I'd love to talk about it. If you have questions about it, let me know if when you're sending me stuff, I can share it like this because I love to let everyone else who follows along know about these new developments. So yeah, talk to me from an elevator. Send me a message from an elevator if you want. Selfie or use the elevator phone to call me if you can figure out my phone number and figure out how to dial somewhere you're not supposed to dial. We talk about that at RTA as well. All right. Hope you enjoy this one. Hope you have a good time. Maybe I'll see you in an elevator at DEF CON or Black Hat this summer. I'll be out there. I'll be, whew, I'll be in Vegas in just a couple days, actually, at my office. Maybe do some more pre-research on the whole new Black Hat and DEF CON location we've got going on. All right. Follow for more. Enjoy this shit. Uh, yeah. God, I sound like, have you tried Blue Apron? Follow. Click the belt. I don't care about any of that shit. I just care about you having fun. Hope you're enjoying this. Hoping you're learning. Hope you have a safe and simple trip in all your future elevator rides. Watch out for each other, all right? Stay safe out there.